Hello, and welcome to the She Leech Showcase. <laughs> I am your hostess with the Moses, the shaman of She Leet. The hardest working woman in podcasting is Katie Kinsey, yeah. Bay Bay. Bay Bay. Thank you. Joining me, my lovely co host, of course, the Young Bucks Nation sensation, the fire breathing, the Rhodes family eating, the spice of life, the sassiest senorita that I know, the hangman Adam Page to my widow Adam Cole Bay Bay, Miss Y to Garcia Savannah. How are you doing? <laughs> Doing good. I'm a little tired, but it's, I've been ha I've been caffeinating on Diet Baja Blast from Taco Bell. So hopefully, like my energy will kind of get jump started soon. But my intrusive thoughts were telling me to like do the double middle fingers like Stone Cold during the intro. But I was like, maybe I shouldn't do that because I don't know how much trouble we can get into <laughs> by just. Okay, never mind. I should have done it then. I was like, mm -hmm. well, you can't see it like that, so I gotta do it like this. Nah, that's okay. I mean, it's 316 day, y'all, as we record this. As you can yes. see in the video, which you can watch live on twitch.tv slash Elite Showcase. Thursdays live, sure? 6... Well, well, 615 Eastern. We'll just, we'll just say 615. We'll just... We'll, yeah. It's fine. At this point, yeah. At this point, yeah. Um, But you can also watch it after the fact on youtube.com slash Elite Showcase, where you can subscribe, like the video, do the things. Thanks. Um, you know, we both had to rep it. She's got the classic Austin 316. Yeah. I had to get the, I don't have, a, I don't have a classic Austin 316, so I had to cop the Vegas 316 shirt that I got at SummerSlam fucking two years ago at this point now. Holy shit. I know. Two years ago. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's a long ass time. I know. <laughs> Shit's wild. Uh, and also, as yeah. uh, the day this comes out on, you know, the platforms and things, um, happy St. Patty's Day to all. That's who... why I'm wearing the green. Yeah, see? I'm wearing green to work tomorrow, so nobody pinches me and touches me and all the bullshit. So you know, right? I'm like... <laughs> we're, we're getting our bases covered. Well, I'll be on SmackDown Raw tomorrow, so, like, I'll make sure I wear something green or have green in nice. some vicinity. Some sort of, yeah. Maybe I'll just make the lights green. We'll fuck around. We'll We'll see what happens. Fuck around and find out. Fuck around and find, fuck around, and find out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just gonna we're just gonna jump start into some news and rumors. Uh, not a whole lot, but I know you got New Japan Cup stuff, so that that's gonna yeah. take a hot hot minute to do all the cups things. Yeah. Uh, but before we get there, we have some Hall of Fame inductions. Finally. But all right. I mean, we're like in the home stretch to WrestleMania, and they're. Barely announcing these, yeah. Like, inductees. It, it's the fact that WrestleMania is in. Let's 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 see, like how long until WrestleMania? And count the is. days. It's a if, little less than a month. Eh. I mean, if the calendar on my other computer wanted to work, that'd be fantastic. But it doesn't, so that's okay. So they're like sixteen count. days. Sixteen days until. S sixteen days. Until WrestleMania. Can you believe? But we finally got our first two of possibly a class of like maybe five or six, depending. I don't know how they're going to do this. Um, our first two. First was announced on SmackDown. SmackDown I was at. Uh -huh. There will be a yeah. vlog, I promise. I just got really fucking lazy and unmotivated. <laughs> yeah. I promise, guys. Um, so, the first one. Rey Mysterio. People. Yeah. Some people are mad. Not because <laughs> Ray doesn't deserve it. Ray, as bad as a father oh. that he is, oh my god, still yeah. has accomplishments that are worthy of a Hall of Fame career. However, people are a little upsetty spaghetti because this is being used as an angle to get Dom and Ray to finally fight at WrestleMania. And it was announced that Conan is going to announce Rey Mysterio. Now, I think, as well as other people think, that Dominic is going to beat the ever living shit out of Conan. And that's what's finally going to cause Rey to break, beat up his child yeah. at WrestleMania. And that could very well be a retirement match. That could be a, you know, mask or something versus career or whatever the hell they're going to do. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. 
But thoughts, feelings, opinions on Ray going to the Hall of Fame? Um, I kind of, well, I, I remember talking about this on Botch Botch and Cheers. So that's always like, I thought we talked about this, but it wasn't on not here that we talked about it. <laughs> yeah, not our show. So I, was like, I was like, did we already do this? Yeah. No, um, we haven't done it here. Right. And what I said there, and I'll basically just shortly re- reiterate here, is that, like, I'm happy for him. Because, like, again, it is well-deserved. I mean, the dude's had 20-plus years of mm-hmm. a career. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and he's done so much. And if there's anything he's shown is that, like, he's, like, one of the ultimate underdogs. And he showed that you can, like, you can do it. Even if you are seen as the underdog. Like, it's yeah. nothing's impossible. Um, but I do agree that it's a little upsetting of the, with the whole angle situation. I know people were saying, like, mask versus career. But I'm like, I feel like that's just Ray getting it twice. You know, like, like what what's in it for Dominic if he loses, you know? So, career, I think, is good. Maybe not mask, because he's already, we've seen Ray unmasked, okay? Like, there's... Which- can we talk about that for a second? Also, hi, Allison. Ray Mysterio hi, without a mask from early 2000s? Damn! Yeah. Ray Mysterio's <laughs> a good-looking guy. Which, like, I get. Yeah. Keep the mask on. Lucha. Lucha traditions. All that all that, all that, jazz. But, like, Ray's a not a bad-looking dude. Yeah, so I don't think it should be mask. You know, I think it should be career. And if Dom retires him, I guess, cool. Um, but... Major heat. The fact that I, I I would only hope that they don't use like if they if that is gonna happen, don't let him take up a full spot. Just like induct like an extra one or two people, so you still have those spots filled. Technically, if he wouldn't be getting inducted, yeah. I feel like that's the only way to make up for that. But I mean, again, you can only see what they're going to do. And I kind of briefly meant I'll briefly mention because I did mention this on botch botch and chair shots. Our little heart, little tongue twister there. <laughs> uh, not really, but um, is that um, the fact like that Conan, you know, is going to be the one inducting him. And I kind of mentioned that I don't really, he's kind of like not on my good side right now. I brought up how, you know, at the El Paso show, he called out Konosuke Takeshita for doing the Eddie Guerrero review. And I'm just thinking like, dude, no one in that building fucking cared. Everyone was here for it. Only he was offended by it. Yeah. And I was like, you don't speak for all Eddie Guerrero fans. You don't speak speak for the El Paso crowd, may, might I add. You, you don't know, the speak, crowd, period. That's what she wants yeah, to say. Might I, yeah, might I add, the crowd in which the crowd in which Eddie Guerrero is from, we are his people. None of us were bothered by it. We all loved it. It was a good tribute. I mean, what the fuck? No one else really did it. So, and we loved every single little shout out to Eddie that there was on air, off air. So Yeah. Also That was no different. Yes, Will. Um, hi. We did know it's three sixteen. Can you I didn't it? realize it. it was, this was a coincidence. <laughs> the, actually the biggest coincidence ever we've ever experienced on the show. Yeah, exactly. Nothing was so, planned. <laughs> yeah, nothing was planned at all. But yeah, back to yeah, so yeah. I'm just like, dude. Again, and then he went, he backtracked and said, oh, it was just a joke. I'm like, dude, it wasn't a fuck. You meant every word you said, but the backlash is what bit you in the ass and you decided to try and, like, redeem yourself. I'm like, I'd rather, I'd rather you just own up and say, look, I shouldn't have said that and that's my bad and, you know what, next time I'll just keep my opinions to myself. That's a lot better than just, you know, trying to, you know, do damage control. Not not, not talking about, you know, Bailey's... Bailey's, Bailey's stable, but, Yeah, exactly. Not them, but different kind of damage control so i'm just like and i'm not saying he doesn't deserve to induct ray but i mean i just don't like him at the moment because he thought he had the right to speak on behalf of an entire crowd of thousands of people who loved what konosuke takeshita did so people are people are gonna do that always in anything so and i'm not gonna like it so yeah um but that is not the only inductee into the hall of fame that was announced uh wednesday i think on the bump which I do not want. Uh, it was announced that the Great Muda will also be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. This is the Great Muda's last hurrah, if you will. He had his match with Shinsuke Nakamura on New Year's Day, right? Was that New Year's Day? Yeah. It, um. Yeah, it was New Year's Day. Um. I forgot what the name of the actual paper... New- I forgot what the name of the pay-per-view is. I'm still pretty new to Noah, but it was on Noah yeah. on New Year's Day that this match happened. Really good match, might I add. Um, 
Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, it's because again I watched this match pretty late, like in the like in the evening. Um, you know, I won't say anything because I don't want to be fact checked or whatever, and I don't want to go back and fact check. But it was a good match. It was a good match to say the least. That's all I'm gonna say. Really good match. Should go watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus, uh, the great mute is going in. That's gonna be the quietest Hall of Fame speech ever. Um, only Eddie and Dom are the only other justifiable choices, but both aren't possible. As so, Conan get the yeah. dubby, and then we'll just said. I'm not. Yeah. No, again, like I said, I'm not saying he shouldn't. I'm just I don't like him at the moment for that. But yeah. Um. But you know, honestly, I think if the whole the fact that like it is being used as an angle, and everyone thinks that Dom's just gonna attack him at um the Hall of Fame, so you can set up that match. And which would probably be a retirement match, maybe. I feel like then you can officially induct Ray and then have Dominic do it. Cause like I like I said um this past weekend or this yeah this past weekend on Sunday that I think it should be Dominic. It's his own son, you know, the son that's kind of carrying on his legacy. If you will, obviously now is not a good example because he's in the Judgment Day. But as like you know being a wrestler, taking after his father, you know. Yeah. So. I think it should be him. So if he does that, I mean, I won't be too mad because I'm like, okay, cool. You can induct induct Rey Mysterio next year or the year after, and then have Dominic be the one to do it. So I guess I guess we'll see in like 16 days what happens. Yeah. Um, Ridge Holland is receiving death threats again because uh this past week oh. it hit a year that Ridge Holland yeah. uh, tossed Biggie and Biggie broke his neck. And you guys know how the IWC is. Loco. So, um, numerous people, even Austin Creed, our our savior, Xavier Woods, love, we love yeah. Xavier Woods in this house. Yeah, we stand. We stand. We stand that man. And he <laughs> even, like, quote tweeted, he was like, y'all need to relax. Like, it wasn't on purpose. And it's it's things like that. It's like, everyone was mad at Ridge in the beginning. Fine. It has been a year. Biggie is still just, you know, hanging out with people. No neck brace on. He was getting tested for his neck to see if he could wrestle. Um, we don't know the results of that. Or probably won't know the results of that until Biggie says something. And yeah. he even said that he's not done with wrestling in general. Like, he's one of the coaches agents i'm not sure what they're calling him for the next in line series that they're doing so like you know all the at like the college athletes that are coming into nxt and stuff yeah. like that he's a part of that program like being one of the people to scout maybe that's what i'm trying to think of um so yeah. he's not he's not fully done in wrestling uh, we all would love to see biggie in the ring again biggie you know mr money the bank mr wwe heavyweight champion, champion. Uh, multi-time tag team champion, NXT champion with the five count, you know what I'm saying? So, like, we would love to see Big E back, just in any capacity. But the point here is, fucking stop sending death threats to this man, who already feels bad enough that it happened. Everyone needs yeah, to Yeah, I just, I feel even more bad for Ridge Holland because... No matter what, it could be like Big E could like two years from now, Big E could be wrestling like as if nothing happened and he'll still be getting shit for what he did. And like that's probably what he's going to be known for. Oh, he's the guy who injured Big E. That, and that's fucked up because again, shit happens. And again, it wasn't intentional. It's not like he was trying to fucking kill him or something. It just, it just happened. And everyone seems to understand that, including Big E, who's like the one who's actually going through it with the injury. And yet he's still, Ridge Holland is still getting these death threats and ugly comments over it. Yep. And it's like, if even Big E's fine with it, why sh- why can't you be? Like, what makes you, give, what gives you the right or thinks it's all right to say such horrible things over something that doesn't, not even involve you, has nothing to do with you. Both parties are, you know, okay. And Big E has, holds nothing against him. So why should you? Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, Jesus said, Kaka, this is a girl quote, unfortunately happens in wrestling, and I wish fans would understand that. Um, 
Vin said, yeah, just like people will still give Ray shit for, quote, this is a quote, killing a man in the ring, quote, unfortunately, and then he said fans are dicks. Fans fucking suck. Yeah. That's just, that's just how it is. Point Rich blank didn't period. hurt Big E on purpose. Exactly. Um, but from one, talking about one black champion, to the longest reigning black champion in WWE with over... 343 days. We're talking about Damn. the EST. The fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the best. The Raw Women's Champion, Miss Bianca Belair. Round of applause. Hell yeah. Round of applause for Bianca. That's our girl. Yes. Good for we, her. We love Bianca. I don't know. Absolutely. I don't know exactly what the number is right now, but when the post was made, that was that's how long I believe it was MVP held the title like that record so she has surpassed and like literally not just it male or female the longest reigning black champion good yeah, for fucking in, like in history yeah that's incredible i'm, I'm and i hope that serves an, like hope that's like an example that look anyone can have super long lengthy fulfilling title reign so you know just make oh, it yeah. happen oh yeah bianca's about to about to hit a year Damn, go for her. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some. Ho- we talked about the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about some Hall of Famers. Um, Nicole and Brie. No longer Bellas. No, 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 no. No, no, no. They will now be known as the Garcia twins. Now I know, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, Savannah, what? are these your sisters? Right. I guess so. Apparently. Congrats. <laughs> Thanks, thanks. I didn't even know that until whenever it was they announced it. Earlier this week, um, yeah. the, the ladies announced on their social medias, and they changed all of their social medias to then say, you know, like, Nicole Garcia, Nicole Garcia, Dan- or Brianna, or I don't know if she put Brianna or Brie, Brie Garcia Danielson, and they basically took Bella out the name. Now, this, of course, raises speculations they have been very unhappy in the past with WWE. As we stated a few months ago when there was the uh, like Raw reunion big celebration thing. I don't even remember what it was at this point. Uh, I don't know. But they expressed their disdain and how they could have been there and there was like no women representation. You know, we, we talked about this. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So... Everyone's like, oh my god, they're done with WWE. They're gonna get an AEW. Which, if they do, cool. Uh, Nikki's neck, barely holding on. Um, she could be a manager. That'd be cool. Sure, sure. Yeah. But just, like, who cares? Like, let them just... These are two women who are just being like, no, we're not gonna keep the Bella name anymore. We're gonna... We're in our 30s. We're gonna elevate ourselves a little bit more. We're gonna go by our actual name. Yeah. (laughs) Like... Like, they, even, like, even if there was no animosity, like, or if they weren't, like, if they, let's say they weren't unhappy, like, maybe they just realized that, you know, maybe it could have been, like, you know, hey, they haven't wrestled or been in anything WWE related for years, why not just start a whole, like, rebranding, basically, with your actual name, you know, Bella is not their actual name. Okay. It is gonna be a little weird, though, because, again, like, Bella Army and stuff, it has a good ring to it, you know, Bella Twins, it just... It take, it's gonna get some getting used to even I'm like you know uh, Garcia twins that don't sound right not just cause it's my last name but I'm just like this just don't sound right but obviously I'm not like unhappy for them or anything let's let's not take this out of context um I am happy for them I'm glad they're doing their own thing but it's just again they've been the Bella twins for so long it's gonna take a little time to get used to the name change yeah. but um, of course, the speculations are always there. Oh, they're gonna go to AEW. Honestly, I don't. I thought I thought I saw somewhere that they confirmed that they are not. That they said we're not going there. First of all, I feel like again, like you said, Nikki's neck is barely holding on. They should not be wrestling a match. Like I'm sorry, but like, you know, they're mothers. They have their own, you know, clothing brand. Empire. They have their own they hair care line. Empire. They have wine, like two, like they have their own winery. So I'm like, dude, like, they they're good. They're good on their own, you know, they have their own podcast, so I really don't think they need to be in the wrestling world. They're fine on their own, so, you know, stop, like, you don't need to speculate. Again, if they go to AEW, cool, 
you know, again, they could be managers. I really don't want them to wrestle only because, like you said, Nikki is just... Nikki's neck is holding on, like, by a thread. I would hate for her to get injured and, like, horribly injured because she is a mom and her son is very young, you know, like... Now, I think barely over a year or two. I don't know how long Buddha gave birth. It feels like a couple years, but I don't know for sure. I want to say two, but I could be wrong. Yeah. So, but still, that's still fucking young. So she has a family to take care of. She has businesses to take care of. Let's not jeopardize that or risk that by putting her in the ring. Because, oh, it would be so cool. Like, no, let's think about her health first, okay? Like, um, so before I get into, well, okay, let's do it. Vince said, I rebrand every two years. I need them, all caps, in the wrestling world. If Soraya's neck can hold up, so can Nikki's. Um, Vince, beggars can't be choosers, all right? I'm beggars just, can't be choosers. I'm just saying, we don't... Uh, Soraya's only had, like, four matches. We don't know how well it's holding up. And, yeah, and also, for, and it's not even that often, and number one, number two... Soraya's a lot younger than the Bellas. Number three, like, uh, this isn't to, like, shade them and, like, to be dirty towards the Be- Or if I say Bellas, the Garcias. We know it's so weird, because that's me. Um, to Nick, I'll say Nikki and Brie, because, again, that's a little easier. And that's their names. Um, nothing against Nikki and Brie, but we've kind of seen what it's like or what they're like in the ring after many years of being absent it's not exactly the best like nick brie bella's accidentally kicked nick live morgan out of consciousness nikki bella's thrown like a stiff shoot like forearm like straight to the face of ruby um ruby riot at the time and she even no sold it because she was pretty pissed that it happened you know if you've seen the they try to do the suicide dives it's just it takes a little while for them to get back into the swing of things and that's not a bad thing i'm not saying like oh shame on them they suck that's not what I'm trying to say, but we've gotten a taste of what it's like for them when they go such a long time without being in the ring versus, you know, stepping in for the first time in years and doing matches. It's not the best, and I would hate for them to get torn to shreds by the same people who would want them to get back in the ring so desperately just because of how cool it would be. Yeah. But that's uh, just me. Jesus also said Soraya's neck is holding up by a tiny ass thread. <laughs> it's true. Like, it, they all are. Um, and before I do the rest of mine, Jesus did say, uh, there's going to be a SmackDown taking place in Puerto Rico the day before Backlash, and Vince said, give Damian Priest a title at Backlash. It is possible. I guess we'll see what happens. You should, you know, they, ha- they have to. They should. I mean, there's a lot of things they should do <laughs> that they don't do. So, that I wouldn't true. hold your breath, everybody. Um, my last two things, both AW related, we finally have a date it was announced kind of uh that forbidden door 2 will be taking place yeah. june 25th it will be in canada a eh? um nothing <laughs> has been announced yet for the match or for the event excuse me so everyone's gonna start speculating what they want wrestlers have been being like this is the match i want for you know either company they're like i think this would be a fun match give me this so i guess we'll see um and the last thing i have ty valkyrie showed up last night in aw much after much speculation because her contract did expire with impact and tony khan did the official tweet she is now a part of the aw women's roster and going after jade in the tbs title I guess we'll see what happens. That match will probably happen. Double or nothing is what I'm saying. Maybe, or maybe one of the one of the Canada shows. Could be the Battle of the Belts thing if they do that soon. Could be oh, Battle of the Belts. That's true. That's it. That is in April. That's before Double or Nothing. I I mean, it, it's really going to depend on how long they want to keep oh, this feud yeah. and how long they want Jade to hold the title. All I'm sorry, the like... I, I said this on Botch Spots and Chair Shots, like, nothing against Taya, but she is officially signed, and my argument was I don't think they should give a woman who isn't signed the title, but she is signed, so I guess technically that kind of invalidates what I said. But I, my, I still kind of stand by when I say there are a lot of other women out there who have been there, like, a lot longer, who have worked their ass off, and I think they should be one of the ones 
to dethrone Jade. We both want it to be Statlander. We don't know her status, but hey, she played bowling with the guys before Revolution. So hey, maybe you you never, you know. Yeah, maybe she's fine. Maybe she's kind of getting there. What I'm kind of hoping will happen now is maybe at the Battle of the Belts thing. I forgot about that. It's in April 7th, I believe. It's right before Easter. It's Good Friday or Good or Saturday, Holy Saturday, actually, because I think it's Saturday. But um, maybe it'll happen there. I would want Jade to win. She would be, I believe, 55 and 0 at that point. If she that, doesn't have if other she, matches. Exactly. So it's a good, like, little even number. Not, it's not an even number, but, you know, it's one of those, like, you know, five, you know, usually people like to do things by fives and, you yeah. know, evens. Yeah. So it would be 55 and 0. And then Statlander comes back at Battle of the Belts, challenges her, and then double or nothing, we get Statlander versus Jade Cargill, where Statlander finally wins some damn freaking gold. Would be cool to see. And then um, Vince says, let Jade move on to Jamie. I think maybe that's a good idea, but I don't think Taya should win the title. She just showed up, and she's already a champion. She doesn't need gold right now. Like, she has gold. It's kind of like my same argument with Samoa Joe and the whole Wardlow situation, the TNT title situation. You know, it's not that I don't think he needed it or want or deserved it, but he has gold. You know, let him use that. Let her. Let isn't, Taya defend. Isn't she the, the Reina de Reinas? Yeah, I believe so. Let her defend that a few times on AEW television. Or bold, bold statement. Bold of you to assume Tony Khan would do something that doesn't benefit his company. Bold. That is true, but um. I don't know. I guess it's going to be one of those things where we we let it play out, guys. We let it play out. Uh, but that's all I have, Savannah. I know you got some New Japan Cup things. Yeah, so um, I was right when I said that I think that, like, last week when I said I think it had already started. It did. It had already started. I was just behind, and I finally caught up. Um, but before I get into the official, like, who's left and who's going to the semifinals, I believe it's sem- yeah, semifinals. Yeah, semifinals. Um, Will Osprey got injured in his match. He has a shoulder injury, which I'm honestly, I'm very, like, upset about. I like Will Osprey. I think he's a phenomenal wrestler. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Don't sleep on Osprey. But he's injured right now. I'm hoping it's not too bad where he's going to miss Forbidden Door because was he? I don't no, he wasn't the last one. That's when he fought Orange Cassidy in mm-hmm. probably the best match of the night on that pay-per-view. But um, I would hate for him to miss the second pay-per-view because I think he has a huge role in New Japan. He's one of the biggest names in the foreign talent there, if not the biggest name of the foreign talent in New Japan. Um, but he did suffer an injury. Um, he was um, in a match in the World Cup tournament second round against fellow United Empire member Mark Davis. Mm-hmm. Um, who was actually going to be his replacement, which honestly I think makes sense. He was the one who fought in with Will Ospreay, or had a match with Will Ospreay before, you know, when he got injured, and he's a member of the same faction, so I'm pretty sure, like, you know, it's someone he trusts, someone who Will Ospreay I'm pretty sure has a lot of faith in. So he is going to replace Will Ospreay in the semifinals. Um, I wonder, I'm wonder. i kind of wondering how much that affected it. I don't really know if they had Osprey winning it. I'm kind of hoping they were having Osprey win it because I think Osprey, it would be like a good time for him to like get a title match, maybe even win back the title. And also because I box with Okada versus Osprey. They always put on hell of good matches, really good matches. So, but that's not going to happen now. So the remaining contestants are Sonata, Tetsuya Naito, Evil, now Mark Davis. It was Osprey, but now it's Mark Davis. Um, Hiroki Goto, Tamatanga, David Finley, and Shota Umino, which is, uh, or Shooter, Mox's son, yes. Red Shoes' son, Red Shoes' actual son. But um, now that Osprey's out of the picture, honestly, I think I would probably want either Sonata or Shooter to win because I love both of them, and I think they both deserve a good title reign or even just a title shot, especially shooter. I think he can bring really, I think he can keep up with Okada. I just think he needs to get to be given the chance. So please give me what I want. Osprey's out of the picture, unfortunately. So if you were going to have Osprey win it, I mean, hey, shooter's done good against Osprey. Hell of a match there. So he, you know, I don't think he would be a bad alternate winner if you were planning on Osprey winning. Just saying, that's just me. 
But yeah, that's all I have on the updates for the New Japan Cup. I'll keep updating as the tournament progresses, but it's there's not that much tournament left. So, yeah. Yeah. I I, I guess we'll we'll have a, another update next week. Yes, we will. See what's going on with this tournament here. Um All right. Let's do uh today in women's wrestling history. Like I said, yes. 316 day. But yep. This time, last year, oh, AEW, St. Patrick's Day Slam 2022. <laughs> uh, Savannah likes yeah. this day. I do like this day, last year. Because not only did we see Thunder Rosa become the new AEW Women's yeah. World Champion, defeating Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and a steel cage. Uh, we also did get a little Rampage taping as well. Uh, there was only one women's match on there. Raise your hand if you're surprised. I'm going to play a little bit of Devil's Advocate only because they don't really have many matches to begin with and the shit's only an hour long and the matches are rushed anyway, so I'd rather have the women have a match on Dynamite where at least it could be a little bit longer instead of... Because I know on Rampage it's probably just Jade Cargill squashing a jobber and that's it. So well, this time it was Red Velvet defeating Layla Hirsch. So yeah, I think uh, that's I mean, when they were like feuding. The, the, it's also just the fact that there needs to be more women's matches. Oh, agreed. But I'd rather have them on Dynamite where you can actually utilize your time and to not just have them rush and get shit over with because you only have an hour and six matches in three segments. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, and you know, in honor of St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. And apparently St. Patrick's Day Slam is going to be like the Rampage thing, but it's going to be after basketball. I don't know. I don't want basketball anymore. It's going to be like at 1130 Eastern time. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Ah, uh, well, I will be gonna, watching Rampage whoever, for the third week in a row. I'm going to say, I don't really watch Rampage anyway, but whoever's going to watch, like actually because you like to keep up with Rampage, which I mean, more props to you. If you like to watch it, cool. Y'all are going to, y'all in Eastern time who watch it are going to be up until 12.30 at night, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure is normal for a lot of people, but, like, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's, 11 that's normal for me. I'm, I'm only used to watching New Japan pay-per-views that late, only because, or New Japan shows, because that's, like, the earliest they will be, which is 11 p.m. my time. The latest, it's probably, like, 3.30 in the morning. Like, and that's the start, not the finish, might I add. Yeah, um... Yeah, like I said, I, this, this, that's just normal time for me anyway, so. Um, alright. Wrestlers of the Week. I went first last week, so now it is your turn. Hmm, I wonder who your tag team's gonna be. I actually have three. Oh. And it's all three members, or not members, but teams. three teams from the main event of Dynamite last night. I'm the Elite, the JAS, Jasper. and House of Black. That match was incredible. Incredible. It was a really good match. I was like, you know, everyone's like, why a triple threat? But some people were looking forward to it. Some people were questioning why it was a thing. I'm so glad it was a thing. It was a really good match. Kenny Omega came out in Winnipeg Jets inspired gear. He had the little flag. It was amazing. And also, I love just a quick, like, just a quick thing to know. I love Kenny's priorities because this dude did not get new gear for when he returned after being gone for 10 months. He did not get new gear for a pay-per-view that he was being on like full gear the bucks had new um new gear kenny did not mm -hmm. um when they won the titles the bucks had new gear kenny did not but when he's when it's his hometown crowd brand spanking sexy ass gear and i respect that i'm like he knows where his priorities are he's like dude pay-per-views come and go but you know what my hometown crowd I'm getting some new gear, which I respect, and I think that's awesome. Um, we had some good moments, some good spots with Jericho and Omega. I'm like, dude, I need this one-on-one -on -one match again. I still want the cleaner versus the pain maker. Give me what I want, please. Like, you have a whole can Canadian tour in the summer, including the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Kenny happens to hold one of the titles for New Japan. So fucking make it happen, Tony. Please, just... Do it for me, all right? Like, I'll stop talking shit for a full week if you if you give me this one thing. You'll be my wrestler of the week, Tony, if you give me this. Wow. These are, these are bold <laughs> but, claims. I hope somebody is clipped to this and remembers. Uh, yeah, I might not actually do it. But anyways, 
Because <laughs> first of all, it needs to happen. Brizzy needs to give me what I want. So that's already a big ex like expectation that is probably not going to be met anyway. So, but I love me some Jericho versus Omega. It's one of my all-time favorite matches in New Japan because it's just amazing. Two of my absolute favorites going at it. I love it. Love it. They're from the same area, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. And, um... Yeah, all teams were amazing, and House of Black retained. And sure enough, I told I told Brooke and Jaylee this. I'm like, I have a feeling. Well, first of all, I mean, they just won the title, so yes, House of Black are gonna retain. I just kind of, but oh, I was like, I I was gonna say I had a feeling. My prediction was that it was gonna. The reason why it was a triple threat with JAS and the Elite is because I thought we were gonna get some sort of JAS versus Elite feud with Hangman. And I was like, they're probably going to do some anarchy in the arena stuff for double or nothing because Jericho and whatever group he's in has to be a part of it. He's been a part of every single one of those kind of matches. So I was like, they're probably going to do that. I was a little bit wrong, but I was right in the sense that Hangman is now kind of getting thrown back into the picture with the Elite. And holy shit, I lost my damn mind at that. The, the ending of Dynamite, holy shit, I was freaking out. Um, there was a clip... Um, posted on Twitter after Dynamite went off the air, they were left. They left us on a cliffhanger on television. So Kenny was like, "Fuck this shit," and got out of the ring. He did not want any part to do with that. But the Bucks were a little less like, oh, hmm. like I felt like they were a little more conflicted. You know, they even kind of warned Hangman, like, "Look, Yuta's getting on the like turnbuckle, watch out." And so Hangman quickly took care of that. But I think the Bucks are kind of like gonna be this glue that kind of brings the elite back together and make sure that they love each other because I that's all I want. And I they were obviously I think everyone knows this. We're gonna get the elite versus the Blackpool Combat Club. Pretty sure at double or nothing or blood and guts. I know people were saying blood and guts too. One of the two. And I honestly think, well, depending on where Danielson is, I don't know how long he's gonna stay home. But it um. I, or if they find other recruits by then, but if they usually it's five on five, they usually like to do these things five on five. Mm -hmm. So I would like to think that maybe they're gonna do obviously have Hangman and they'll keep it at four. Or if they must have a fifth person, I think the elite's bringing in Adam Cole to the because Kyle O'Reilly, I don't know where he is. I think he's still injured, but Adam Cole's also a top baby face right now, and he hasn't even returned to the ring and do everyone. But as I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. He should. He should be one of the most loved. Yeah, he's soon, soon. So, but, you know, I think right now they're going to focus on the whole Hangman and Kenny aspect, which, I mean, I love it. They're trying to put those little pieces back together. I'm here for it. And that all be happened because of that match, which all three teams were involved in. So that's why they're my three picks. There we go. Uh, I also had House of Black because the house always wins. You always bet on Black. I saw you tweet that. I have to it's just a necessity every time they win a match yeah. that is what I, I will do <laughs> that's just that's just the golden rule at this point uh, i'm also going to give it to yeah. uh alba fire and isla dawn they won their triple threat tag team match on nxt and now they're the number one contenders for the excuse me nxt women's tag team championships at stand and deliver which means matt can call them whenever they want i'm gonna call them my spooky witch gals are going to become NXT Tag Team yeah. Champions, and I'm so excited. 16 days! Woo-hoo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Uh, yeah. Woot woot. Woot. That's also a special little shout-out to uh, Team Sex Ninja Party, because they were in the match. Mm -hmm. And I live the gimmick. Yeah. Yes, you gotta live the gimmick. I do. Um, okay, so, for Malays, um, technically, I'm, I'm just gonna group them together but i'm gonna give it to the homegrowns that came together on dynamite more specifically riho so it has to be like single if i have to single one out i'm gonna pick riho because she won her match on rampage against nyla rose this past weekend on rampage i said that and um pretty good match because i actually went back and watched it because i like riho and um it was really cool to see because i kind of talked about how i was like well maybe because willow got involved and sky blue was involved by getting spray painted maybe they're gonna be the next you know 
the other participants, if you will, with the homegrowns. And it seems like that's going to be the case because Willow and Sky Blue and Riho came to Jamie and Britt's aid, which honestly I'm very excited about because I know we were talking about how Thunder Rosa, Statlander, you know, all these other names that are a lot more utilized. I'm glad that they're using names like Willow Nightingale and Sky Blue who I think definitely deserve, like, especially if this happens at Double or Nothing, mm -hmm. they deserve a pay-per-view spot. They deserve a pay-per-view debut. And they are, a, like, they are homegrowns. I think they are, like, you know, I really think that they can, you know, show that, look, we are going to be the future of this division. And I feel like that's going to be their opportunity and they're finally going to let them show what they're capable of. That's, like, somewhere that's not dark and the random Dynamite episodes they get to be in. Yeah, yeah. Also, Rio came strapped. She said, I'm bringing a pipe to this because I don't trust these bitches. She also, I saw someone on Twitter saying she looked hilarious. I'm like, dude, she looked adorable. I loved her outfit. She And she had all the, like socks of the office. It's a world's best boss. That's, the, that's an office thing. I'm like, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, she was, she was, just, she was Rio's adorable. Precious. Yeah, I love her. So. Precious angel. Um... My pick, even though she didn't win her match, I am just loving everything she's doing. I'm sticking with my NXT lotties. Uh, I'm giving it to mm -hmm. Sol Ruka. I talked about the next in line thing. Uh, she was a part of that, I believe. Yeah. She has officially hit one year wrestling in WWE and just okay. in general. And she has proved herself to be a star. She will not be in the ladder match because I mean, that's the thing I can just briefly talk about. Roxanne Perez may or may not be cleared for stand and deliver, so there's going to be a women's ladder match for, um, I guess, the NXT Women's Championship? But I have a feeling, like, the last week before stand and deliver, Roxanne's gonna be like, no, guys, I'm good, and then just join the match. So, I guess we'll see. But I'm going to give it to Sol Ruka. Her and Zoe Stark put on hell of a match, as they normally do. I just love Sol Ruka. She's great. Yeah. Agreed. You're, it's, your, it's your turn. Your, your mall lays. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought you were going to say something else. Sorry. No. <laughs> um, yes, I have mall lays. Same thing as the last one. I'm just kind of grouping them together. They didn't even have a match. But that opening segment with the four pillars, I, 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 I was not expecting much. I was like, MJF three Bar Mitzvah. I was like, what the fuck? But then Jungle Boy came out and I was like, oh shit. I know what's going to happen. I know what is going to happen. And then sure enough, Sammy, Gu Sammy Guevara came out, which I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of. Honestly, I tolerate him a lot more when Ty's not with him. Which he's a lot sad. more watchable. He's a lot more watchable and, dare I say, a little more enjoyable to see when he's not with Ty. And I'm like, this just goes to show you should not have just thrown them together on an, as an on-screen couple. You should never have done that. But maybe now because, like, you know, Ty is out, Vic working on her back, which she should Absolutely. work on your back, Ty. Um, but because of that and because Sammy's getting into this, you know, feud mm -hmm. with the four pillars, maybe they'll kind of use that as a chance to keep them separated, you know? Yeah. Mm, the, keep them separate. The four pillars but, was um, funny. I love it. It was. I loved it so much. They each took a they each took their own turn taking a shot at MJF. Um MJF of course called out Sammy Guevara saying that he was like not gonna be engaged in the next seven months or whatever the fuck he was like Mr. You know, is gonna get engaged in the next seven months to another woman. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, Sammy pulled out. You know, well, you know, what happened? You're in did fiance, your fiance thought she leave left you? you. Like, yeah, yeah, classic. Yeah. So, but, but then, then of course, everyone said Darby, Darby Allen. I know you're not the biggest fan, but people were saying Darby Allen like crushed it too, which I agree. You know, he brought up the whole people bitching on Twitter about their contract and their status, which is honestly very valid, very and I thought that was hilarious. And he's like, you know what I'm going to do if I don't get a title shot? I'm just going to go complain about it on Twitter. <laughs> that was really good. I liked that. But also the moment when they all were in the ring and MJF was like, what the fuck? And all of them at the same time, I want a title match. I was like, yes! Yes! It was, it was incredible. MJF got thrown into his cake, and even Brooke said on Twitter, 
Like, it's not a wrestling, cer- like, celebration without someone getting thro- cake thrown in their face. And I kind of talked about it. I was like, you know what? Those poor cakes, you know, cakes like that aren't cheap. They're expensive to get cakes like that. And they always get, just get thrown in someone's faces. Hashtag justice for the cake. They should be eaten. <laughs> also the fact that... I guess... I guess... Te- <laughs> Good. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I guess technically, you know, instead of, you know, when you hit, like, when you fall over and you hit fall on the floor, instead of you ate shit, I guess technically <laughs> MJF did eat cake because, you know, he fell into the cake. He did. That was probably one of the best cake spots I've seen because it was like, yeah, he was on the cake, you know? Like, I know some wrestlers really have to, like, mush the cake in their face themselves to really get that effect. Like, oh, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. But no, he fell right smack onto the cake. On to But, and also, um, he looked like sh- and he looked like shit. Oh my, even Derby called it out. He's like, you look like shit. Because he was, I didn't even realize that. Oh yeah, he's covering his eyes and his face with the hat and the sunglasses. Mm-hmm. And he took them off and oh my god, his eyes. Like, oh, it was, it was bad. Yeah, he looked, he did look like absolute shit. The best line in the entire thing, because it was, a, it was very entertaining. It was very funny. Every pillar got their jab in at one another, as they should. But it was right before, like, the brawling happened, but it was like, y'all got MJF mashugana up in this bitch, and I busted out laughing, (laughs) because A, I did not expect that phrasing from MJF, and B, I just didn't expect it at all, and it caught me so off guard, after I was, like, laughing at little bits and pieces of everyone's. Mm-hmm. Well done. Well done with the pillars. I was, this, I was impressed. This, honestly, that made me want to get the four pillar shirt, and I'm honestly kind of close to doing so, but it doesn't help that it's 30 bucks before shipping and tax. So I'm like, maybe maybe if there's a sale set at some point before double or nothing, I'll get it. But I'm like, dude, like, this, even, again, as someone who doesn't even like Sammy Guevara, I was like, this was amazing on all four parts, all four pillars. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, this is, like, this really showed that, look, these are the future. This is the future, you know? These four guys are the pillars, you know? And I can't wait to see how this feud, di- I, not, yeah, digresses and slowly builds up to, which I would like to assume is double or nothing. That match is going to be great. And I'd like to assume also that build, during the build-up, we're going to probably see some sort of, like, one-on-one between the four. We're going to probably get, like, Darby and, um, Darby and JB against... Um, MJF and Sammy, because Sammy's still heel. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I know he was kind of talking like a face until he insulted the Canadians, exactly. but yeah, so MJF and Sammy versus um, Darby and JB might happen. We might get some, like, sort of, you know, one-on-one between the four. And also, honestly, I thought MJF was going to say, like, oh, you know, you guys should be in a triple threat. I'm like, no, it, it can't be a triple threat, but then sure enough, that, that, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. I mean, like you said, this is going to lead to some very interesting things in the in the yeah. in the near future for AW, and I'm I'm excited. It does have me intrigued to see what they'll do, and we are more than likely getting that fatal four way, which is gonna it's gonna slap. So we we better. It was again a really good segment. It was a really good way to like really like start this feud. You know. It's exactly. a good way to start. Exactly. Um, I have two, both from Monday Raw. Solo Skoa, because he is the embodiment of his uncle. Yes. I don't know. The <laughs> the Samoan family tree. Yeah. J- Jimmy and Jay, like, went on, like, Chris Van Vliet and, like, kind of talked about the family tree. <laughs> Bro, so many branches. Yeah, everyone's I saw an uncle. that clip. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, everyone's an uncle. uncle. Everyone's even an even uncle. Roman Reigns, even technically. Roman. Uncle Joe, yes. And they were like, we even uncle called Joe. Uncle Joe. <laughs> and he was like, stop it. And we're like, and he didn't uncle? like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Solo yeah. is 100% in embodying Umaga, and I loved the street fight with him and KO. Of course, it led to a beatdown, because it's the bloodline. And I'm also going to give it to Dawkins. Because my man's just holding it down. He said, listen, Austin Theory, you little bitch. I'm sick of you talking. And, you know, because Austin Theory came up to them saying, oh, you guys want the smoke. Well, I know what I'm doing at WrestleMania. What are you guys doing? And, of course, that led to a match between the two of them. And Dawkins didn't win, but put up hell of a fight and proves the point that everyone needs to put some respect on Dawkins' name. It's only the right thing. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Yeah, agreed. I know people will say, like, oh, Montez Ford is the star. They should break him up and push Montez Ford. I'm like, no, they're both equally talented as fuck. They both hold their own. Exactly. But they shouldn't be separated. They belong as a tag team. Yes. We do not separate the tag team. No, we don't. No, we do not. Um, all right. No. Time for the question of the week. Now, you I... briefly brought up <laughs> Harry Potter last week. I don't remember in what context, <laughs> but you brought it up, so it had my wheels turning oh, a little now bit. Now it's gonna eat it. Yeah, what? it's gonna eat at me that I don't remember what I said that involved Harry Potter. <laughs> um... I honestly, we were talking about like a he who must not be named or something, but I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was like, um, he who must not be named. It was, oh, fuck. Oh, I think Vince McMahon, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds right. If we're wrong. And I, you know, oh. reference Voldemort. So you well, said that. And someone then... who must not be named and he is woman. So you said that and I got my wheels turning. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do... I'm gonna get. I'm gonna name you some wrestlers, and you're going to tell me if you think they would be a part of Dumbledore's army, the good guys, or Death Eaters, <laughs> the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought we were gonna sort them. I was like, I thought we already did. This we game. sorted them already. Like, it's okay. We already. Did. I remembered. Yeah. Yeah. I remembered this time. Okay. So, Just to make sure. I have ten. Um. We can do a little more after the fact if you want to, but give me a number one through okay. ten, and I will tell you who, and then you tell me which which team you think they're on. Okay. Um, eight. Rhea Ripley. Oh, she's, she's Death Eater at heart. I'm so, she's but in a good way. Okay, Rhea, but like she has the look, she has the domination, she has the scare factor. She's brutal. This is my brutality, you know. <laughs> she Death Eater. Yeah. 100%. I agree. 10 out of 10. Agreed. And that's okay. Yeah. I'd, st- I'd love her anyways. It's okay. All right. Another number. Um, two. Bailey. Ooh, okay. Well, that's the thing. If you're talking, well, I guess technically current Bailey. Um,. <laughs> I guess maybe, like, because she's, honestly, Bailey as a heel is very ruthless. So, honestly, I think I would still put her with the Death Eaters. But if you're talking Hugger Bailey, oh my gosh, she's Dumbledore's, like, <laughs> lapdog. She, she's she's Dobby, basically, if she was Hugger Bailey. Yeah, still. basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she's not. She's not Hugger she's, Bailey. She's, she's damage like, control Bailey. That is true. So, I, I would agree. I would say Death Eater for sure. But she's one of those cool Death Eaters that you mm-hmm. can like, hang out with, but when the time comes, she'll, like, you know, I'm really gonna kind of, you know, she'll probably yeah. kill you. Which, fair. It's nothing personal. <laughs> I get it. Alright. Next. You have to give me a number. Number five. Mickey James. I think she would be in Dumbledore's army. She has been healed, but her heart, I think, is, like, in her heart. Even as a heel, she still has a pure heart. I think she would be on the good guy's side regardless, even if she was a heel. She, she'll she always she'll always be a part of Dumbledore's army. Yeah. In her At some point, she'll, like, come yeah come to her senses, like, if she was heel, and then she'd be like, you know, this, is, this isn't right. This so, is the way. Star yeah, this is, the, this is the way, yeah. Mandalorian? No? Yeah? Love Mandalorian. Love Pedro Pascal. That's a whole other conversation I can go on and on. I That's not for this. Mm-hmm. Alright. Give me another number. Um, three. Will Ospreay. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. <laughs> that one's a little hard. Because, like, honestly, Will Ospreay, I can kind of see as, like, a Severus Snape, all right? Like, you think, oh, he's a bad guy. But, I, like, when you really get to know him and when you really, like, as the story goes on, you come to realize that he's actually a good guy. 
So I would put him on Dumbledore's team because I get I think he's like the he's like the Snape. He would he would honestly be the one to make the sacrifice. Let everyone hate him if it's for the greater good, which is what Snape did. Spoiler, sorry, but I mean Harry Potter's been around since the nineties, so she said spoilers. Y'all haven't watched it now. It's your own damn fault. It is. I mean, it's Harry Potter's been around since the 90s. You could have read the books or seen the movies by then, but the books are a lot better, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I love I love the books. I haven't read them in a long time, but I, I just love Harry Potter. They're so much better than the movies. Yeah. All right. So there are six left. You can just give me one through six, and I'll figure it out. All right. Um, One. Adam Cole, baby. Um, okay, I think same kind of a little bit of applies. Maybe not as much as Will Ospreay, but I think, again, yeah. Well, and especially now, he's a baby face. He's on Team Dumbledore. I don't see him as, like, oh, he's such an asshole and he's never going to be good. Like, he's not. No, I think he's 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 got a good heart in the end of the day. Hell yeah. Hi, Jess. <laughs> What's up, Justin? Get your podcast in the, in the chat. Love the shirts. Good ass, you senior. Good ass, me and you. Thank you. <sighs> We reppin', we reppin', we know, we know. All right, one through, wait, let me actually double check. Yeah, one through five. Four. Seth freaking Rollins. Oh, man. Um, it's bad that I'm, like, unsure. Like, no. I don't know where he stands. Because I don't think... Uh, I don't know, man. I do think as a heel, well, maybe not like, you know, fashionista heel, but like Messiah and even like, you know, the future, you know, oh, I didn't sell out. I bought into evolution. Mm -hmm. I feel like that one, he's more the Death Eater, but he, that's not his current character. But uh, I don't know. Chat, help me. Katie, or what did you think, Katie? I would give him Dumbledore's Army. In okay. this aspect, specifically because he's currently in a feud with Logan Paul, who is the epitome of evil. That is true. So... He <laughs> Logan Paul makes Voldemort look so pure. Damn. That's, so... how you, that's how you know. That's how you know. I mean, I've never seen Voldemort film dead bodies in a suicide forest, but that's just me. <laughs> <gasps> Fuck. She's not wrong, but Jesus Christ, I didn't even say it. Oh, God. You know what? I keep it real. I mean... Oh. Jesus. All right. One through four. <laughs> <laughs> um, three. Uh, Liv Morgan. Um, Dumbledore Army. Like, yeah, she's crazy, but it's a good crazy. Yeah, she's uh, the queen of extreme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't say that. Someone's gonna sue you. What do they get? What do they want out of me? Nothing. I don't have anything to give. You're not taking my phone. They want little. They want. They want little Adam Cole. Nobody's taking him. <laughs> he's priceless. That's why she wants him. Everyone keeps That's saying he thing. doesn't move, and I have proven on a basis quite a few times <laughs> here alone. He, he is moves. He is pretty stationary at the moment. Oh, he looks so cute. He's just hanging out. He's just vibing. Aww. He's he's my protector. He's so adorable. I want the Rhea Ripley one too, but like, I don't. I haven't bought her yet. I kind of, I kind of want to. I, I think I might. It's one of those things you just put off. Like, I know I want. Like, I have the red AJ, but I know I want the blue AJ. I don't even think they have the blue AJ anymore anyway. But still, I know enough to check. But like, I, I you got me the McIntyre, and oh, he's so cute. I love him. I did. I did eat three, 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 three. Yeah. All right. One through three. One. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> oh, Death Eater. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. I mean, after no, after you... what he said about Vince, some people would agree. Did you uh, see that? I guess that's true. I saw that, like, he had something to say, but I didn't see, I didn't get the details. Like, I didn't see exact quotes and stuff uh, something along the lines i don't remember the exact quote off the top of my head but something along the lines of he says that he'll always love vince mcmahon which is something si not to the full extent but something similar brian danison has said in the past as well um that like there'll always be that love 
for Vince for everything he did for them. Even uh. though, uh, but it, yeah, it's it's a messy situation. John, you, no comment was an option. Uh-huh. You fucked up, yeah, my guy. You no, I up. I get you, but like, I'm not saying that. Oh, he should defend Vince and stuff, and I'm so glad he did. But look, I can sort of see where he comes from because there's some people and there's some even wrestlers who not done good things. Or who are accused of not doing good things, but I still like them because that's that I don't know them for that. I don't like yeah. them because of that. But and maybe there it's that kind of connection. But I'm not. I'm just saying, like with Vinnie Mac, I'm like, Ugh. I can see where the uh comes I, from. I think it's I one can of those see where, things like, where it's like I said, John was in the business for twenty years. He yeah. has that. He has that connection with Vince. So that is definitely a possibility as to why he spoke his mind and he should have just been like, oh, no comment. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe there's just some things you just best don't talk best about. keep them to yourself. Yeah, you, you, it doesn't mean that you don't feel that way. I'm not, it's not, it doesn't mean you don't feel that way, but, you know, it's, if it's a sticky situation, maybe just don't touch it. Just be like, yeah, no, I'm not, yeah, like, not going to talk about that. Yeah. Don't ask me about that. I'm not going to comment on that. Exactly. But... That aside, or you can put that in your consideration. That is completely up to you. John Cena, no. Dumbledore's army or Death? No, <laughs> um, no. I feel like he's Dumbledore's right hand man. He's like top baby face, you know, passionate promos, you know, doesn't give a shit. Like he loves that the fans don't like him. Like when they say John Cena sucks, like he loves that too. He loves you regardless. He does so. Yeah, he's he's a good person. Like regardless of that, I concur. I concur. All right, one and two. One. <laughs> Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Death Eater. <laughs> now, now. I'm just kidding. No, no, I know, I know, I know. Actually, I have a funny story about Cody Rhodes. Okay. Um, so I ha- so um, we have a family member, like it's a little distant. Like it is a cousin, but kind of like think about you know the bloodline you know roman reigns family yeah you know it goes deep there's a lot of branches so the like i think like i don't even know what cousin he is but i do have a cousin distant relative who is also a big wrestling fan also special needs he's so adorable (laughs) and he loves wrestling so when my grandma wants when his birthday comes around my grandma wants to get him a wrestling shirt my grandma doesn't know shit about wrestling so she goes to me she's like i know you like wrestling so can you order a shirt but she's like i don't know which wrestler he likes and i don't speak to this relative you know often i really don't see him often at all so i don't even have their contact info Mm -hmm. um so i'm just like or like his families or his parents or whatever or siblings so i'm just like so i can't i don't know his favorites either so normally when this situation happens, I try to get him a wrestler that I know everyone likes. And this year, I was like, as much as I don't want to, I was like, I just went with Cody Rhodes. I'm like, dude, <laughs> everyone, I, I told her, I was like, I'm going to go with a wrestler that I personally don't like, but I know everyone else does. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to like it because, you know, again, everyone likes Cody Rhodes. He's a really, he's a top baby face. Everyone loves him. So I'm like, I, I, I got him, I ordered a Cody Rhodes shirt, but I thought it was like... <laughs> Everyone likes him. Every, everyone but, loves Cody Rhodes. He's got that adrenaline in his soul, you know? Yeah, I guess. Something, um, something Cody Rhodes. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, that that just kind of reminded me of that. Cause, um, it just helped prove right. your point that he's in Dumbledore's Army. Yeah, everyone loves him, so every, I'll put him in Dumbledore's <laughs> Army. He's, I'm going to try, try and compare him to someone. Like, who's someone... In Dumbledore's army, that not pe- many people like anyway. <laughs> He's that person. Ooh. I mean, Seamus is not like wrestler Seamus, but like Seamus and <laughs> uh, Seamus is Seamus. Kind of a dickhead, especially a Harry in the leader. In the leader, that is true. Maybe yeah, that that would be his position, or someone like Colin who's super fucking annoying. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that, you guys no, call him dirty like that? Damn. <laughs> he was annoying, man. I didn't like him. He was young. He was a little kid. I don't give a shit. He was still annoying. Damn. Oh my god. Alright, well, the last one I had 
just because I just, you know, was scrolling through Twitter. First wrestlers I saw, I pulled on here. Um, Swerve Strickland. Oh, he's a Death Eater. Dude's a bad heel right now. He's a bad he's, man. Yeah, he's a bad man. So, Death Eater. I thought it was going to be CM Punk, but I've seen that dude trending. I'm like, haha, dude, Death Eater's even too kind for him. <laughs> well, like, I just... It was Ask just, a Ben. <laughs> she said, Jail. <laughs> <laughs> jail this bitch said Azkaban prison <laughs> prison Phil instead of prison Mike prison Dom Dom can give him a few tips on, <laughs> well, how, to, no, because, on how to survive the prison well cause Phil's survive. going to prison prison Dom was in a woman's prison <laughs> according to Matt if you ask Matt that's, what, that's where Dom was <laughs> well well, he can still give him some pointers, just they expect this, but times two or three. <laughs> and I guess not taking into account that this is wizard prison, they might That's be a little also more true. They got, they got fucking Dementors swirling. It's crazy. CM Punk's one of them. Oh, so he's a, he's a Dementor now. <laughs> he's like both. He's multiple personalities. No, he's the cult of personality. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But no, <laughs> no, he's just a you, cult. You, he's you, just a cult. you handed me that one on a silver platter. I know. I had to I take know. it. Silver platter that I freshly polished before giving. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Dementor still belongs in Azkaban. I'm trying to think of all the badness in Harry Potter and just apply that to him. Damn. He's in all seven like Horcruxes in one. He's, you know how, like, people call Andre the Giant, like, oh, the eighth wonder of the world and stuff. He's the eighth Horcrux, CM Punk. <laughs> Should that be the title, the eighth Horcrux, and let people guess what this yes. is going to be about? Yes. I'm writing it down because I'm going to forget. Horcrux. The eighth Horcrux. I'll check the spelling of that later. That doesn't matter. It's nothing personal. It's just, <laughs> I don't like CM Punk. I think... Listen, that's that title's gonna be fucking hysterical. I'm so happy. <laughs> Cause now people have to watch the entire hour to figure out what we're talking about. Yeah. So ha ha. Ha ha, you gotta watch the whole thing. Which you should be anyways. We're entertaining. Yeah. We think so. <laughs> right, right, at least I think so. I think we're great. The hundred and eighty two subscribers on YouTube says so. Yay, 182 people like us. <laughs> Vince That's... shows up out of nowhere and says CM Punk is Dobby. Damn. No. Dobby's also kind of annoying, so if you want to go there. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. I would ne I'm never throwing socks at Punk then. I'm throwing hands. <laughs> God damn it. And Punk and Ace Steel throws chairs. <laughs> No, Ace Steel bites. There's a difference. No, but that's because I influenced him. I did thinking for him. I gave him the idea. So, does that mean Ace Steel is fluffy? <laughs> uh, but that would um, that would make Kenny Omega Malfoy. Because <laughs> well, I mean... fluffy then right? No, it was not fluffy. No, it was no, Buckby. fluffy wasn't the. It was the hippogriff who that Buckby. bit Malfoy. Yeah, Buckbeak, who bit Malcolm because uh, he insulted him. <laughs> don't insult Buckbeak! No, yeah, yeah, I agree. Don't insult him. So that's that was, that he had it coming. I'm a, I'm a Slytherin. And I was like, bro, sh dude had it coming. He had it coming. This becomes a whole musical. At, At least Punk doesn't super, super kick, kick puppies. <laughs> what is... Okay, I'm shutting this down. <laughs> no! Oh, we, are, I... we are done with the... I'm done with the two of yous. To he was out here saying super kicking puppies and a steals buck beak lord oh, thank you guys so much for watching and listening <laughs> to this to this episode my goodness <clears throat> savannah tell people where they can find you which you're working on all of that fun stuff um you can find me on instagram and on twitter at y2 garcia underscore if there's no underscore it's not me that mistake has been made currently working on uploading finally an episode of light the fuse onto my onto youtube our youtube and i also want to at some point i was gonna do it this week but then i realized spring break is over tomorrow tomorrow's my last day and i still haven't even asked if they can do a part two to 
the this episode that I'm about to upload. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for that. Um, also, New Japan Takeover next pay per view, which I believe is Capital Collision in April. That will for sure be my next recap episode. I might do something else different um, for it, so I can have something else up by then. But yeah, that's all I got going on. Well, actually, I was on Botch Pots, Botch Spots and Chair Shots Will's show with Katie and Allison um, on Sunday. We recorded Sunday. We went live Sunday. And it was really fun. Um, I hope to be on again at some point. I hope they liked me enough so I can be back on. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I did that. And I did something else. But Katie will be the one to talk about that. Yes, I will. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at KatieRasson13. The link tree I'm about to get all things She Lead Showcase. Twitch.tv slash She Lead Showcase. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, you can find us live Thursday, 6 p.m.-ish. Eastern time, youtube.com slash Sheely Showcase. You can watch the videos. They're way more entertaining. You can see all of the shenanigans in the zoo. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. If you just want to listen to said shenanigans, that's fine too. We appreciate it. Sheely Showcase is the brand. It is the weekly show that you are currently watching. Hi, hello. We have um, many shows on the channel. Savannah named her too, like the fuse, New Japan Takeover. Mm-hmm. I have an interview series called Inside the Mind of. A new episode will be out on Monday with you guys are never gonna believe this. What? It's gonna what be with it? Savannah. Yes, I finally got my episode. I don't yes. know why I was so nervous, but I was. Savannah Savannah was very nervous for no reason. And we got the episode done finally, so people can stop asking when that is coming. It is coming on Monday. There also yes. will be a uh, SmackDown podcasting type vlog out sometime in the next few days. I I was off work for five days and I lost all motivation for everything. I binge watched Narcos and I just had a great time <laughs> vibing. Yeah, I went to see Scream. I had a great time <laughs> being off for five days. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I'm doing my best. But the vlog will be up sometime soon. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Savannah mentioned botch bots and share shots. We both were on there. Go check them out. They're great people. Yes, they are. Heel Tax is Justin, the man, the myth, the legend, who created all the music for all the shows I just mentioned. Also in the crowd. And story time with Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. Um, go check his information out in the descriptions below of the video and the audio if you need any music done for your podcasts, etc. All of our friends, he's done the music for, so you can go check that out. Basically. <laughs> Basically. And, yeah, just just stay tuned, because I do a lot of other shows on <laughs> with other people. You know, Smack and Raw on Fridays. Mm-hmm. We're doing Getting Offed on Saturday. We're covering the new <laughs> Scream. So if you guys have not seen Scream, go see it, and then you can come hang out with us in the chat. You know, it's the usual horror squad, Matt, myself just from get joe and reek did say he he will be there so we'll see we'll see we will see but until then thank you guys so much for watching listening enjoying until next time bye bye